disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him? Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Then he said not, this he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the back and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, leave her alone. Against the day of my burying had she kept this. For the poor always ye will have, but me ye have not always. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now here we have Judas. Seem like he's really concerned for the well-being of the poor. His first attack was, let me make the leader look like an idiot. Let me dummy down the instructions of the leader. Let me make the leader look like he don't know what he's talking about because I know. This is my area. I know what the poor needs. I know how much loaves and fishes this could have purchased because this is my area. So here you go to even dumb down the leadership. Jesus, being the man that knows everybody well, Jesus knew what he was all about, his motives. You see, Judas dummy down Jesus, and then he also came with an announcement, a complaint. You ever been in the room and you came to push a vision and then people start complaining. When the complaint comes forth, somebody just in your mind just red flag. When the complaint comes forth, just know that it's a red flag. You see, when the complaint comes forth as believers, we must go to God. God, how do I handle this complaint? Because right now we came to push one vision. We came to push one mission. But here comes a complaint. The complaint came on the scene. What do we do with this? God, how do we handle this? God, do I agree? Because it seems right. God, do I help push this complaint because it sounds right? Oh, do I go before God and say, God, hold up. How do I handle this and still be a covering to my brother and my sister? Because maybe they just don't know better right now because it just seems right. How do I address this without making them feel like they, they, there's no hope? Sometimes as pillars, as leaders, we gotta look past the company and know what God is saying. For instance, before I pulled up, me and Sakisha was in the van, before we pulled up to tent city, I saw the cars pulling off. I'm like, where y'all going? Nobody's there. That's the car, the trucks are there, they chase them out, the track is gone. I look past that. Because I know. It's just something, the Holy Spirit, we gotta be, as leaders, we gotta be very attentive and sensitive to the Holy Spirit. How about the man went in Ten City and I saw it wasn't even built up even more, there was more people there. But it's just they had a lot of food back there. One lady just came in with a, with a garbage bag with like seven, eight plates in it. Sometimes we gotta look past the complaint and look at God. When we look at God and we hear from God, we won't go wrong. That's right. And we learn how to deal with it according to how it goes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. For instance, I called Jalen. Jalen wanted to come and volunteer. 
I said, okay, I'm gonna send someone to pick you up at 10 30. No one can go pick him up. They were too busy. I understand. There's a lot, of, there's not that much help, you know, when it comes to certain things. So we just gotta thank God for the help that comes to actually get it done. Amen. So I said, okay, don't worry. I'm gonna leave my, my house and go straight to the jail. But I didn't call him. I forgot to call him. When I got to his house, he was staying, went to the boys and girls club. I could have got upset with him. I don't just leave. I got to his house like 11, 11 something. I could have got upset with him, but no. I analyzed the entire thing. Man, I should have called him. Yeah. But I couldn't get him a ride. I said, hey, yeah. I'm coming for you. Yeah. That would have changed the, 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 the results of this. Why get upset? Why look at this like he's wrong for leaving the house? No. I didn't communicate. My Lord. My wife. Another example. My wife is going somewhere. So, where are we coming from? We serve faithfully. Well, as faithful as we know how. And my wife didn't have a job. She said God told her to leave her job and come and work for the ministry full time. At first I was about to say, are you mad woman? But because I have to be in tune to the Holy Spirit, I said, well, if God said it, then I believe it. Right? <laughs> so I watched God provide, and I had a part time job working at Sephora. And I watched God provide for us for years. She worked faithfully at the outreach, not getting a paycheck for five years. We even sold one of our vehicles that someone blessed us with just to pay the rent for the center. You see, where I'm going at is, it became an inconvenience to us, right? But we did not complain. We didn't find it robbery because we were looking at God. We have our lives planned out. But when God comes and He calls us, we serve without a complaint. Learn how to be obedient to the voice of God. So we don't get distracted when complaint comes. We don't get distracted when, when, when it look like they're for you and they're not really for you. Hmm. What are you talking about, Pastor? Hmm. Judas mastered how to be a community. He was amongst them and wasn't even for them. His heart. You see, God is the one who wrote this. He had to reveal to us that Judas, in his heart, he didn't care about the war, but what he said, it made it look like he was for justice. It made it look like he, he's politically correct. What Judas 